testosterone suspension, lost and forgotten. Even I have never produced a video about this classic anabolic steroid called testosterone suspension. Let's get right into it. The history of testosterone suspension predating the classic esters of enanthate, sipinate, sustenon 250, and propanate into the 1930s, this was discovered. And did you realize that JFK, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, our president of the United States from 1961 to his death, November 22nd, 1963, he was on this drug among other drugs because he had Addison's disease. And you guys can definitely fact check that one. So what is this lost and forgotten testosterone that's definitely not really used anymore? And I'm going to go into the why today. This is a form of free testosterone that is a general term because it's in an aqueous base versus the esters. We'll get into that chemistry in a bit here. In America, back in the 30s, all the way through the 1950s, they made so many different forms of this. Here are some of the trade names back in the day. Sterotate, Andronac, Aqueous Suspension Testosterone, obviously, Virosterone, I remember that, Testosterone Aqueous, and many, many more. The FDA indications, because this was a legitimate drug back in the day, obviously for male hypogonadism. And do you realize it was also used back in the day for adolescent boys with undescended testicles? Also, among other indications, it was prescribed regularly for women for painful lactation after childbirth. This would help with that. And also, among other classic anabolic androgenic steroids, metastatic breast cancer that's inoperable. All the way back into the 1940s and 50s. It was absolutely amazing. Now, it was widely available up until 1998 when I want to tell you a story of a lab called Steris Labs. They were the last supplier of testosterone suspension. If you're watching this video, I'm sure you're concerned for your testosterone levels. In addition to testosterone, you want to check sexual binding globulin, estradiol, free androgen index, and potentially cortisol. That's where I want to talk about today's sponsor. Let's get checked. They're a worldwide leader in at-home test kits. So you can get a comprehensive look at your testosterone levels and other labs without even leaving your home. You can order a test kit that will be delivered to you in discreet packaging with next day delivery. Once your sample arrives in the laboratory, confidential results will be available from your secure online account within two to five business days. These results are reviewed by a clinician and a member of the Let's Get Checked nursing team may call you to review your results. Let's Get Checked laboratories are CLIA approved and CAP accredited, which are the highest ranking levels of accreditation for labs. So if you want to test your hormone levels without having to leave your home, visit trylgc.com. And only for the anabolic doc fans, check out in the description, the link, and use promo code Anabolic Doc. They were the last supplier of testosterone suspension as they produced a lot of different testosterone products. And they had an investigation by the federal government because they had an inventory report discrepancy. Wink, wink. You know what that means. A lot of stuff was falling off the truck. Right, guys? So this is how brand name legitimate drugs, even today, are produced for pharmaceutical grade only through doctors, but 
some of the stuff is lost and it ends up into the black market. This drug right there. And after that time, it was shut down. The FDA shut it down. Of course, you could still get testosterone suspension. You just have to compound it. Let's talk about the chemical structure of this incredible basic drug. This is testosterone. It's not esterified. It's in an aqueous solution, water-based solution, suspension. It's called aqueous testosterone suspension. This is versus the esters. They realized very soon after, within years, in the 1930s into the 40s and beyond, that if you esterify, if you put an ester, a hydrocarbon waxy ester, onto testosterone structure ring, it gives it different properties where you can oil mix it into oils, different oils, and you could put it into the intermuscular department is a depot and it will leach out and the half-life is much longer. We'll talk about that here in a minute. This is suspension. The half-life of this is variable, but it's gonna be hours, maybe 12 hours. Some guys will say two to four hours. It depends on the dose and the kinetics. If you're injecting it regularly, it builds up on itself to some degree and the half-life becomes longer, depending on the frequency and in injection. It was prescribed in 50 milligrams to 100 milligrams per milliliter. Do you realize if you're taking this drug every day, that's what you had to do? Some people did it a couple times a week, but your levels are definitely gonna go up and down. It was best used daily. And that's what JFK was said to have done multiple times a day. So if you look at the math and the concentration milligram per milliliter that was given 50 to 100, and if you're doing once, twice a day or more, you could go from 350 to 1400 milligrams of testosterone per week. You see, now you get into the PEDS. So now why is it strong? Why is this such a powerful steroid classically? Well, in terms of the milligram per milliliter, you're getting 100% of testosterone crystallized right into your body, right to your muscles versus the ester. So if you look at propanate, sipanate, and nanthate, susanon 250, there's, there's in that milligram it, per milliliter, there's an ester delivery. You see that, that waxy hydrocarbon. So that takes up some of the space. So it, it's thought for an example, enanthate versus suspension is about 70% less milligram per milliliter. You see that? Because of the direct aqueous delivery. Now, when you look at this thing as a pet, you're, you're banging this stuff in. This is aqueous suspension. It's super fast acting. You're doing it twice a day, once, twice a day. You can imagine that you're going to get results super fast. So in about one week, you're going to see already significant results versus the esters. It takes weeks or more. And that's the trick. That's what this video I want to bring home to you for the PED side of it. Now, what are the side effects? Classic side effects. This stuff, aqueous suspension, anyone will tell you. Come on, guys, let's get the comments going here. Super painful. This is super painful injection. Anyone that's done it could tell you. And I go back 30 years or so, and I remember guys doing this, mainly power lifters doing this stuff. It was self-limiting because it's just too painful to take. There's swelling at the injection site. There's infections because it just gets so gnarly and it's just a reaction. Is it a, a reaction, the redness? You can see videos on this, steroid injection reactions. Is it an abscess or is it a sterile abscess because you're injecting it so many times and you're just building up so much scar tissue? All the above is true. Next, aromatization. This stuff is gonna massively aromatize. It's direct testosterone banging into the system. It's going to get into the system and it's going to aromatize depending on the dose, who you are, and all these other variables. So there's the gynecomastia. And there's some of the brain side effects, the emotional side effects. Sex drive, of course, will go up, but it's labile. It can be up and down because it's so much going into that brain. Aggression, this is where it's used. Powerlifting, strongman, and just regular guys. Bodybuilders use it back in the day. They don't use it anymore. And I'll tell you why in the end. 
mainly it's just very painful and you have other things that they use. You are using this because in the morning of training, and guys, I've seen it, they inject this stuff. Hopefully it doesn't interact with your lifting because if you inject it in your leg and your leg is painful, it's going to be hard to squat, not to mention deadlift. So you inject this stuff at 7, 8 in the morning. Within two hours, this stuff is full blown into your central nervous system. And there's the argument. Does it work that quick? Does it not? Well, if you're talking about aqueous testosterone suspension, it's peaking. The kinetic, it's peaking within hours. And that's why it was used, not to mention some of the boxers and some of the MMA and so on and so forth. Let's get the comments. Interestingly, it's not liver toxic. However, when you're doing so much of this drug and you really don't know what you're taking, you could have liver toxicity. But it's not 17-alpha alkylated like an oral. So it doesn't go through that first pass effect. This is why doctors need to pay attention to the real science, what's going on right here. It doesn't mean you should take it. It's going to be toxic to your body and your brain and shut you down. But it's, we're doing science. It's not liver toxic because it's straight testosterone. It's not 17-alpha alkylated oral drug. Look at the history. Cardiac disease absolutely can be toxic. It can destabilize plaque. Hypertension, it's going to affect the lipids. Androgen-induced erythrocytosis, looking at the hemoglobin hematocrit, it's going to be just like the esters over time, depending on your genetics, depending on your variability. You have to check your hemoglobin and your iron studies and the ferritin, guys. Androgenicity, no kidding. This is testosterone. Depending on how much you're pumping in, it's going to affect sex, it's going to affect hair loss, and of course the prostate. When guys are young, it seems like they don't care about the prostate, but it's going to affect it. The conclusion is here, it's not used anymore because it's super painful. And according to the experts that I've talked to, some of you guys that are so incredibly historic on this, this is a history channel of steroids, that we have better things for the fast acting. Super fast, super powerful. What do they use to start a cycle now? Used to use suspension, used to use this. Now they got deep ball, anadrol, and other fast acting orals. So there it is, guys. There's my presentation of testosterone suspension. You have to excuse me. I missed it. And that's for you guys. And one particular guy out there that in the comments said, Doc, testosterone suspension, man, let's go. You missed it. So here it is, guys. Let's get comments. You guys, let's give comments for men for the world to understand how powerful and potentially devastating this stuff can be. But it does work and everyone's using steroids. But why not this one? Do you guys understand the physiology and the toxicology here? You understand the real life limitations? I have to have comments. Have you tried it? Give us the full blown information here. What dose did you take? How long did you take it? How did it affect you? Did it work? What were your side effects and why did you stop it? Or why do you use it? Thank you so much, gentlemen. I really hope this information helps men in the world understand how powerful these drugs are and that potentially there can be significant side effects. And as always, young men, please be careful and don't do any of this stuff because number one, most importantly, you're going to get shut down and you're going to be on testosterone for the rest of your life. Thank you, gentlemen.